Here we go again. This is the Stuck Movie Watching Vlogs, and this is for the month of April. So early in the month of April, American Union was released in theaters, and although I would have liked to have seen that in theaters, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Still, I wanted to see the first three films in the franchise. I do not count the ones that were released straight to DVD. So naturally, I started with American Pie. And to be quite honest with you, I wasn't a big fan of this movie when I first saw it. I was at a point in my life where I didn't like comedies with white people. I was into black comedies like Friday, House Party. Yeah, I was racist. But throughout the years, the movie did grow on me. I've never been a huge fan of the franchise, but it's really funny. Some of the stuff kind of is gross for no real apparent reason, like it's not really that funny to me, but I do like this movie. Uh, one thing I definitely do not like is Chris Klein in this movie. He's such an awful actor, and not much has changed since. So this I will give a 3.5 out of 5. So then we move on to American Pie 2, which to be honest, the first time I saw this one, I, I actually thought it was better than the first one. But watching it again, that's not exactly the case. It's, it's still very funny. A bit funny -er in some areas, but it, it doesn't capture the, I guess you could say, magic of the first one. So 3.5 out of 5, I'll give it the same rating. No magic in this one. American Wedding. I really do not care for this one. The movie focuses way too much on Stifler, and he's not the one getting married. Not to mention, he's far too annoying in it, and the movie is just... It's not really that funny. Kevin, who's never really been important to the series, is just completely useless in this one. And he definitely has his funny moment. Ultimately, it's it's a little let down. I hate that dance-off sequence. That's terrible. So I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5. So next, because in the previous month I watched The Mummy, I went and watched The Mummy Returns. Definitely not as good as the first one. No way. But it does have a lot more action a hell of a lot more CGI. It's so fun. Definitely the story elements that are really dumb. The fact that all of a sudden the Brandon Fraser character is like half Magi or whatever. The Rachel Vice character is now a descendant of Nefertiti. It's not a great movie, but I gotta give it 4 out of 5. It definitely doesn't deserve that, but it's just a non-stop entertaining ride for me. Next movie is Broken Arrow. I just felt like watching it. I was into a John Woo kind of thing mood and I, you know, I, I love this movie. It's fun, it's silly, over the top. I like John Travolta as the villain. He's very charming but very evil. I like Christian Slater. The action is fun. It's just a great little movie and I'll give it a 4 out of 5. In April, as we all know, Titanic was re-released in theaters in 3D. I didn't give a shit. So I actually stayed home and watched it on VHS. And I did an incredibly long and probably useless review on it. So if you want to check that out, by all means, but I do give it a 5 out of 5. Then I finally saw the movie Immortals, the one with the future Superman. I saw that movie three times this past month, two more times than I actually wanted to see it. But the first time I saw it, I liked it, I enjoyed it, then I had to watch it again with my dad and again with my friend. I enjoy the action, I enjoy the blood and the effects, but definitely the story is not very interesting or even that involving. I definitely had a lot of issues with the movie, but overall it was fun and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And I really had no desire of seeing it ever again. Then, because this movie has been sitting in my room ever since I made that video where I showed off the DVDs that I had never opened, I decided to watch Maverick. And I haven't seen this in a very long time. It's really entertaining and funny, quite old-fashioned. I do like it. I can't say I really love the movie. Then again, I never really did, so I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. Then came The Cabin in the Woods, the highly acclaimed new horror film that's produced by Josh Whedon. Everybody loves it. I don't love it. I really, really liked that movie. I was very much entertained, but I had my issues with it, and I did a review, and you can check that out if you want. I did see Cabin in the Woods with my friends, and one of my friends actually made a Stay Tuned reference. So the next day, I actually watched Stay Tuned. Stay Tuned is from 1992. It stars John Ritter. Uh, him and his wife are sucked into the TV programming from hell. Really a funny and clever movie. Very underrated. Hard to find as well. If you can find it, you should really check it out. It's really good. And I'll give that one a 4 out of 5. 
Okay, most of you guys should know, and I really hope you do, I started a video game movie challenge. But basically, I decided to watch every movie that's based off a video game. The first movie I started with was The Wizard from 1989, you know, the movie that they basically made to advertise Nintendo products. And on the same day, I officially started the challenge with Super Mario Brothers. Ugh. You can check out the video where I review both of them, and you know, I will be making more videos on, based on this challenge, so I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Next came a movie called Vulgar. Kevin Smith was the executive producer of this movie, it's from his VSQ production. Very low budget movie, but some of the familiar faces that you see in Kevin Smith's movies are in this movie. The main character is played by that one guy that played Dante in Clerks, and he plays a clown who's attacked in a very disturbing way. Some time goes by and he becomes a kid's icon, but his attackers come back and want to blackmail him. Interesting premise, decent performances, terrible direction, and the budget constraints definitely show in this movie. Very disturbing movie, I don't care for it that much. I I'll give it credit, you know, for being what it is. It's a very low budget, so I'll give it a 2.5 out of 5. And then I watched the movie Death Race. I don't care what anybody says. This is a fun, guilty pleasure of a movie. And on Blu-ray, fantastic, man. The gritty detail and the vivid picture is amazing, but the sound is thunderous. I love it. Yeah, it's silly, so I'll give it a 3 out of 5, but it's so much fun. Next, the movie that I've been anticipating for a very long time finally played in my theater for one week, but I got to see it, and that was The Raid Redemption. I love that movie. Please check out my review. Yes. Then for some reason, I watched the film Sorority Roll. It was in my Netflix queue. I forgot about it. It moved to the top, and they sent it to me. That was a dumb movie. Good looking woman, not gonna lie, but that was not a very good movie. I give it a 2 out of 5. Then came a movie called God Bless America. Still not entirely sure of how I feel about that movie. It's good, the performances were great, highly controversial. Some people are gonna be quite offended with it. It's basically about a man and a teenage girl who go on a killing spree and their targets are reality TV stars. It's quite good. It was on demand, now it's gonna go into theaters limitedly, so it'll probably be on DVD real soon. Check it out, see it for yourself if you're into controversial comments. The record about Bobcat Goldfleet. So now I'm gonna give it 3.5 out of 5, but I really have to give it more thought. Okay, so last year I got the complete saga of Star Wars on Blu ray. I don't care what anybody says, I like the entire series. Yes, I know the prequels are not that great, I, I don't compare them to the awesomeness that is, you know, the original trilogy. I watched all of them except for Revenge of the Sith. Yes, I watched the original trilogy, then I watched the prequels, that's the way it should be seen. I just didn't get around to seeing Revenge of the Sith. Now say what you want, I like that movie a lot. I know the acting is cringeworthy, but I love the action and the eye candy, and yeah, some of the story is flawed for sure, but I do really like the movie a lot. And on Blu-ray, it was phenomenal, so I give it a 4.5 out of 5. The next movie goes with my video game challenge, it was Double Dragon, and I really hate that movie. I give it a 1 out of 5. Then I saw a movie called The Perfect Host with David Hyde Pierce. It's got a fugitive who tries to hide out at a guy's party, but he ends up regretting that because his host is odd. It was a pretty good thriller. David Hal Pierce was great. Even the guy that played the fugitive was great. So acting was definitely well done. The movie just had way too many twists. It, it could have just ended with one twist and that's it. But it kept going. It was okay. Definitely a one-time watcher. It's on Netflix, so 3 out of 5. Then I watched Phenomena with uh, Jennifer Connelly in her, what, second film. I know it's a classic and all, it's directed by Dario Argento, did I say that right? It was okay. I thought it was kind of boring, to be honest. Interesting in some areas. Um, I give it a 3 out of 5. I wasn't that impressed with it, but I did like it in, okay. Continuing with the uh, video game challenge, I watched Street Fighter. Wow. I reviewed that and Double Dragon on the same video, so if you want to check that out, go ahead, please. Then came a documentary that I've been wanting to see for a very long time, and I loved it. Beats, Rhymes, and Life. The Travels of a Tribe Called Quest. 
I think I got reviewing it, but I'm t I don't I don't know. Documentaries are my clip and I I really don't know how to review documentaries, but I think I'll give that one a go. I really did enjoy it. I love the Twilight Cult Quest. It's a good documentary. I'm gonna try to review it. Then I saw a movie called Repo Man from 1984, starring Emilio Estevez. The movie's about Repo Man and aliens, and it's a very zany and wacky film. Very odd. It's a cult classic, and I respect that, and I like certain elements of it, but overall, I didn't care for it that much, so I give it a 2.5 out of 5. I've had this one movie on my Netflix queue for a long time, and I finally watched it. It was called Full Contact. From 1992, it stars Chow Young Fat, Hong Kong action movie, pretty standard stuff, but I liked it. The story's not really that bad, it's conventional now to today's standards, but it's basically about a heist gone wrong, and the guy that was double-crossed goes out for revenge. I think the movie would have been better had they not had the dubbed version only. God, the dubbing was bad, but the action was good, I was entertained, I would give that a 3 out of 5. Wind Talkers. Wow, I I remember liking this movie when I saw it in theaters, and obviously I bought it on DVD for a reason. I've seen it quite often, and I, I, I liked it. Now, all of a sudden, I don't like it so much. I have a friend that pretty much hates this movie, and now I know why. It is so cliche and so corny. Not to mention, the movie should focus on the Navajo cold talkers, yet... Nicolas Cage is the star, and the focus is on him, and his story is very cliché. I do like the battle sequences, even though there's one that features some really bad stock footage. It's somewhat of an entertaining movie. I kind of get a kick out of it, just some of the corny acting, so I'm going to knock it down as a guilty pleasure and give it a 3 out of 5. Generous, but hey, definitely not one of John Woo's best. Yes, continuing with the video game challenge, I watched Mortal Kombat and I enjoyed this movie, I give it a 3 out of 5. This will be the next video to go up on the challenge and it's also going to contain Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which I have to watch sometime this week and I'm really not looking forward to that one, like, at all. I pretty much would rather... Slash my arm and took my own blood, spit it out, look it up off the floor. Shit. And the final movie I sort of watched uh, this past month was a movie called Lost and Delirious. It says it's from 2001. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. Independent movie, and it's about college lesbians. Now, guys, calm down. It's not really that good. Very dull stuff. I. I, I shut it off halfway through. I really lost interest. I still actually have it. It came from Netflix. I don't know if I'm going to continue it. So I'm not going to rate it. I'm just going to say I lost interest. Very melodramatic. Very boring. And I hate movies. But the characters talk like this. And I can't hear what they're saying. It's like, speak up. Because... I can't fucking hear you! So anyway, that's my list, that's what I saw this past month in uh, April. Now it's May. The summer movie blockbuster season is upon us. And I will be seeing Avengers this week, I cannot wait. Just not sure if I'm gonna see everything that's coming out in theaters. I want to, I would like to, but money's tight. So anyway, like I said, please support my video game movie challenge. I got a long way to go and I hope you guys, you know, are there with me. And I think I might have said this in the last update, but definitely please stay tuned. Me and Jennifer Pan, aka Japan Productions here on YouTube, we, we got some things planned. Don't know when we're gonna get around to doing them, but we, you know, just stick around. Peace, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you guys later.